In predominantly Catholic West Belfast, Ralph McKay is preparing his top fighter for upcoming Olympic qualification. He thinks politics should be kept out of the ring. What he's noticed, though, is something that many people from all sides told us. Whispers of Irish unity growing louder. Nobody really mentioned about a border poll, but Brexit has really brought this forward now, so it has. So it's really up to whoever is in charge to say when the poll's going to happen. Or I can see it happening in three, five, three or five years. The election fight here isn't just about Brexit, it's about Northern Ireland's place in the Union. And there are hints here that Brexit is accelerating a realignment of politics in the capital. And that could hurt the DUP. Belfast epitomises the problems that the DUP have. They had a brilliant 2017 election. They won three out of the four seats here. But this time, most people think they're going to lose at least one and possibly all three. And that would be a hugely damaging result, not just for the DUP, but for unionism more generally. In many ways, Boris Johnson's deal unites parties in Northern Ireland. They all hate it. Jones can say with one breath, the DUP are indignant. Rather than a great thing, this, is a, this will do a great deal of damage to the yeah. union. Yeah. It will. They believe it puts an effective border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Well, we've always been clear it's got to be Brexit for the whole of the United Kingdom. It can't be Northern Ireland left behind. Ben Lowry is the deputy editor of the unionist paper, The Newsletter. I think unionism is in one of the most difficult positions it's ever been in. He believes the DUP support for Brexit and its effect on the union has damaged their cause. You get back to this confusion. The fact that unionism was pretty largely, almost overwhelmingly, let's say 75% plus pro-Brexit. And now it suddenly has to feel that maybe Brexit's not a good idea. It, doesn't, it isn't an easy thing to change your view on that. It's a bit like turning around a tanker, the realisation that maybe Brexit is not good for being unionists. So I think that the DUP is struggling to respond to this and its voters are struggling to respond to it. Brexit has changed nationalist politics in Northern Ireland. Sinn Féin and the SDLP don't traditionally stand aside for one another. But this time they have, in the name of stopping Brexit. That's the community that I come from. And me and my brother are the only one. The organisation Our Future, Our Choice encourages people to vote for Remain candidates. We as an organisation do not want Brexit. We recognise that young people do not want Brexit in Northern Ireland. They're optimistic about the future. For them, Brexit is an opportunity, giving parties an excuse to work together in opposition to leaving the EU. And I think it's probably one of the first times in Northern Ireland that people are looking at an election and saying, you know what, actually we are going to stand down a candidate there because it is so important that the right person with the right message gets, gets that seat returned and becomes an MP. What you're seeing is a healthy development in Northern Ireland of parties willing to cooperate for something that is for in, in the vision and for the greater good. Um, and Brexit is so, so big that the, the constitutional issue is almost been able to be, for once, placed aside. aside. To many, the new pacts and Brexit have ushered in a new era. But old tribal habits die hard. Posters have sprung up around Belfast attacking the family of a Sinn Féin candidate. We've decided not to show them. They've been blamed on loyalist paramilitaries, but so far no group has claimed responsibility. The strategy, though, is clear. Whip up sectarianism to mobilise the vote. Alison Morris writes for the nationalist-leaning Irish News. Since the election campaign has started, we're only a few weeks into it already, you can see it dividing back into tribal issues, so into orange and green, into nationalist and unionist all that sort of toxic campaign and so it moved on from being about Brexit to being about securing the union. Many unionist voters see Boris Johnson's deal as a betrayal. That anger could display itself in many ways and some unionists worry it could result in voter apathy. That's why voter registration evenings like this one have been put on by self-professed loyalists in majority unionist communities. <laughs> I caught up with two of them afterwards. 
Jamie Bryson and more homes. This is going to get far, far more toxic uh, the further on uh, that we go. This is only the beginning exactly? of this. Well, we will see what happens in, in the next couple of weeks. It's, it's, a, it's a political campaign and it's going to be a hot and heavy uh, political campaign. There, there, there's absolutely uh, no doubt about that. And, and I, I would add to that, you know, it's been toxic. It's, it's only now considered toxic because you, loyalists and unionists are reacting. But it, it's completely understandable. It represents the anger that's within the loyalist and unionist community right now. In reality, is this just about a sectarian poll who can get the most people from a certain community out to the polling station? Yes. In places like North Belfast, it's a sectarian headcount. It's us for them, and that's not a popular opinion. And many people will try and gloss over that, you know, uh, to try and create some type of utopian situation. But the fact of the matter is, yes, it's us for them. Stirring sectarianism might help get out the vote. But the danger is, once unleashed, it might be hard to hold back. Brexit has already changed politics here, and it may well have altered the direction Northern Ireland is headed in too.